Like, obviously, uh, last time we saw you, a frustrating one for you, right? A very kind of emotional night for you, I guess. Um, what were the steps to kind of moving past that and, and, and just getting back to business? Uh, it was pretty simple. The steps to, to getting that behind me was just booking another fight. You know, this, the moment I walked out of the octagon after the Luke fight, uh, I saw Danny, my manager, and was like, I got to get back in there as soon as possible. Um, you know, you learn from your losses, but you definitely don't want to marinate in them for too long. So I just told him, you know, let's get a fight in December. And then uh, they gave me November. So I was like, sweet, that's perfect. So super excited about uh, completing the trifecta. You know, I fought in Abu Dhabi. I got a fight in a packed arena, and now I'm here at Apex. So I can say that I did the full trifecta in a calendar year. So pretty excited about this opportunity. That's awesome. I thought about that. That's cool. So uh, you wanted to get a fight. They give you the, the young, undefeated, stud, up-and-coming prospect, right? Did you see that coming, that that was what they were going to hand you? I didn't even really care, honestly. I was just so anxious to get back in there and compete. So when they said Sean Brady, there was no hesitation. And it's nice because I've worked the desk for a few of his fights, so I kind of already had the drop on him. You know, I'm pretty well aware of, of who he was prior to him getting in the UFC. Uh, my teammate Tyler McGuire almost fought him. So, um, you know, we, we kind of already game planning for Tyler to fight him a while ago, and that fight never came to fruition. So it didn't matter who it was that they called me with um, headed into this fight. But Sean Brady was the guy, so that's the matchup. And I'm really looking forward to it. I think he's a tough kid. You know, you look at these guys coming up at welterweight. You got – everybody talks about Hamzat Chemaev. No one's really talking about Sean Brady. No one's really talking about Shavkat Rachmanov, these tough up-and-coming guys. You know, I feel like you got to include all three of them in this conversation. So it's, um, I'm excited I get one of these tough up-and-coming prospects. I want to give him a shot because I want to still prove that I'm still that guy. That's cool. I know look, what a fight fan you are in addition to just being an analyst. So, I mean, I don't want to say you say you're a fan of this guy, but, I mean, have you liked what you've seen out of him coming oh, up? Oh, dude, 100%. When he hit that one-arm guillotine uh, over, I think it was Aguilera's his last name. I, I almost said Christina Aguilera. <laughs> totally would have watched that. <laughs> but, yeah, you know, I was working the desk that fight. That's impressive, you know, one-arm submission, something I know something about. So, uh, yeah, it was really cool to, to see him go out there and get that win. And I like the challenges that he presents. It's, it's a way for me to kind of right that wrong. I made one tactical error against Vicente Luque, and now it's like, you know, once they gave me the Sean Brady fight, I'm like, this is perfect. This guy's a great grappler, and I can right that wrong by going out there and beating him. So I'm really looking forward to kind of hitting two birds with one stone, getting a win and uh, just erasing the bad taste in my mouth from that last loss. I guess you never know until you get out there, right? But, like, the, the grappling fan in me is hoping that you two guys go out there and put on some insane grappling clinic. But often when we see grapplers, right, they cancel each other out, they end up striking. So do you anticipate one over the other? Uh, you know, I think that at some point there will be some grappling exchanges. But, uh, you know, I've been in the UFC for almost 10 years, and I haven't displayed my full set of skills. So don't be surprised if you hit the nail on the head and we cancel each other out and things take place on the feet. I think a lot of people will be surprised with what I'm capable in terms of my striking. It's just when, when plan A is grappling and I don't have to deviate from that and it's working, what's the point? You know, but, yeah, I know he's a tough guy. I know he's well-rounded. But I, I think this has the potential to be a full display of mixed martial arts between both of us. It, it sounds like you're excited about fighting the Apex. I did wonder kind of what the emotions are like, right? Because you come in here as like in, in work like office job, like sit at a desk. So like is there going to be like a different feel? Is it, is it a bad thing or a good thing that you, maybe you're so comfortable with the environment? You know, I haven't even really thought about that. The way I perceive the apex is I feel like I'm, I'm going back to my ultimate fighter days. I look at this like I'm going back to the tough gym. And look at the run I put together at the tough gym. You know, four tough fights before I fought the finale, you know. And uh, so that's the way I look at this. I'm not looking at this like, oh, I'm walking in the office to actually get in a fist fight. I'm looking at this like this is a throwback to the ultimate fighter days. I'm going into the small octagon and the small venue with the small crowd to go out there and fight in a big fight. So while it has that tough environment feel for me, it still has that big fight feeling that I'm going in there to fight a tough up-and-coming prospect. So we saw how I did. We, we all know how I did on the Ultimate Fighter. So I feel like that this plays into to my advantage being here at the Apex. That's awesome. Last thing for me, obviously the goal is to pick up a victory. But I wonder, like, what's the, what's the overarching thing? Is it, you know, just to get the last one out of, you know, get that feeling away? Or is it to prove, like, hey, I had a little slip up, but I'm still a contender. I, I, you still need to be talking about me in that mix. You hit the nail on the head. I just want to prove I'm still that guy. And there's no better way of doing that than to fight a tough, up-and-coming, undefeated prospect that everybody's super high on, as they should be. I mean, look at his, 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 his line of work has been great. He's undefeated in the UFC. He's undefeated in his career. The place he cut his teeth in CFFC, I mean, that, that's a tough proving ground for an up-and-coming fighter. So I know what he's capable of. I know what he brings to the table. And this, he ain't, you know, this ain't no pushover. He's a tough kid, but I've got to prove I'm still the guy, and I know I am the guy, and I know I'm going to get my hand raised, and I'm super excited to get out there and compete. Hey, Michael. Um, so 
after your last fight, there was footage um, that came out on the UFC's throw and agony of you just darting out of the arena and um, going to like, to this garage. I guess I just wanted to like know like your um, I guess like your like what was going on through your mind at that at that point. Um, in my mind, it was just I was upset with with my game time decision I made. You know. Uh, I just got I got into that position so fast against Vicente Luque that I just got excited. I got excited and I rushed to finish, and that goes against that goes against like the day one philosophies as a grappler position before submission. I started throwing up subs before I even had a position secured, and, and that's against everything that that I've been doing, especially in this recent run at 170 pounds. I mean, you saw the way I you know I positionally dominated. Diego Sanchez, you saw what I did to Neil Magny. You, like, you would not expect me to do something like that against a guy like Vicente, but I just got in such a rush for the finish, and that's just all. I, I was just mad at myself, you know, and um, it's not the best display of being a good sportsman when I dart on out of there, you know, but I made sure to, you know, let him get his hand raised. I got to, you know, I got to take it on the chin, but once I got out of the octagon, it's like there's, there's, a, there's a lot that goes into these fights. I tell people all the time, uh, you know, one one fight is is a full season in another sport. You know, we put we put in ten to twelve week training camps leading into one moment. You know, in NFL seasons, what it's seventeen weeks or something like that. So it's fairly relative to the same length uh, of a season in, in any other sport. So um, when you, when you lose that season, it hurts. It hurts a lot, especially when you when you pride yourself on being a hard worker and being a, a, a cerebral fighter. Um, I was just really mad at myself. I guess that's the best way to say it. I was just really upset with myself. And how long did it take you to get over that loss? Not long, because they they called me about this fight. So you know, it's you always you don't want to bask in your wins, but you, you know you got to have short term memory in this sport. And but it's hard when you lose, you know. And uh, I think it's important that if you're ever going to look back, you should only look back to see how far you've come and remind yourself of that. But on a loss, you're just looking back at that one thing, and I'm just beating myself up, like, why did I do that? Why, why, why? I could be sitting here having a way different conversation with you guys right now. I could have potentially been the guy fighting Kamaru Usman next, but that's not the case. So I'm here to, to, to put together another win streak. It starts with Sean Brady, and, and I'm going to get my hand raised on Saturday night. And finally, um, I asked Sean too, but I, I want to know if you noticed that you two have conflicting tattoos on your, <laughs> on your, on your uh, stomachs. And I, if you just... Yeah, you know, I saw the kind of meme about that, and I saw his little uh, his shirts for this fight with a guy choking out a tiger. You know, the the difference with his tattoos and mine is there, there's a lot of meaning behind this. You know, my my grandfather who inspired me to be a competitor was was a motorcycle racer. He had a race team. He had a race track, and it was called Triber's Tigers State Line Speedway. It's Triber's Tigers race team. So this tiger's paying homage to my grandpa. Yeah, conflicting for sure. Thank you. Yeah. I think the important follow-up, did you see that Venator signed a deal with USC Fight Pass? Maybe you have a message for Uncle Frank. Hey, Uncle Frank, you got to bring back Law & Order. You got to bring back me and J-Mo, dude. Come on. We killed it. I'm only getting better. So is John. We're getting our reps now that Venator FC is on Fight Pass, which let me tell you something. For people that don't know, the card that me and John called in Italy, Jack Hermanson and Marvin Vittori were on the undercard. And look at where they've become now. And I think that, you know, I think it would just be – I think it's a good fit for you and me to be be back at the desk calling some fights in Italy. <laughs> Let's go. Law and order. <laughs> Peace out, guys.